Hi, welcome. This is Moina Bass Fishes, and we are recapping the 2022 Toyota Series Tournament on Lake Sam Rayburn. Uh, just that was held a couple days ago, and this is the month of May. They had two tournaments. This is the May tournament. So let me just start out by saying the fish were mostly done spawning. It was uh, there were still a lot of small fish up shallow, occasional better fish, but I, it was to me the better fish were far and few between up shallow. I mean, I spent a lot of time in practice catching a lot of shallow fish and never really a whole lot materialized in the forms of consistent bigger fish. However, there was the random good one, um, that's for sure. So, and, and I imagine if you'd happen to pull up into the right little section of the lake, it might have been full on, you know, the deal. But in any case, I didn't happen to do that. So, um, anyhow, um, I ended up um, 15th place. I felt like I left a lot of money on the table in this tournament. That's because uh, of missed fish. Uh, for example, I, there was one that was clearly like a five and a half pounder that uh, it jumped a couple times. I still had it hooked. And eventually it just came unhooked as it was probably about 10 feet out from the boat and maybe five feet down below the surface. <clears throat> couldn't see it and it was just swimming you know parallel to the side of the boat and I was just holding steady pressure I wasn't even trying to uh, force it up to the surface just uh, letting it pull steady some steady pressure and um, not really trying to gain ground on it wasn't allowing it to gain ground on me either and it wasn't really trying to that hard and just for whatever reason the hook just came out so that was uh, a disappointment as a quality fish would have been a four pound call um, on that last day and the other thing the other opportunity that I missed out on in this tournament was the last three hours of all three days of competition I, ne I never called up never upgraded uh, my fishing just completely went flat in the last three hours um, just just really tanked my performance had I uh, been able to get on something each one of those three days definitely would have been a different story. I mean, that one fish alone that got away was the difference between 8th place and 15th place. And then had I, uh, you know, figured something out in the last few hours of each day, I mean, it could have been the top five performance. But, uh, yeah, I didn't. So, ended up being 15th, which, um, not bad. Finishing the money, we will take the money and run. Um, and by the way, this background here is Gunnersville State Park, the site of my next tournament where practice starts tomorrow, in case if you're wondering. Anyhow, um, what else do I got to say as far as the conditions? We are going to get into the rod locker and look at some baits. Um, I'm just trying to set the table for, uh, for that here. So, um, you know, the conditions were nice. The, the weather was nice. Um, that last day, we did have a fog delay of about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, something like that. Uh, but, you know, that's the way it goes. So, otherwise it was sunny and calm all the rest of that day. And uh, so anyways, as far as how, you know, so how did I catch my fish? Well, I, I, had, I had one key place. Um, it was kind of a main lake point secondary main lake secondary ish kind of a point where the, there was some fishes hanging around there and if I went there right away in the morning which I did which I did every day um, there would be fish there biting it wasn't ever a lot of fish but it was the quality fish the first day I got my biggest one there the second day I got my two biggest ones there and the last day I got my biggest one there and lost my biggest one so it was always I could I could always get a good start on that spot which was why I was so disappointing that I couldn't build on that elsewhere. The first day I did build on it, you know, but I still went the last couple hours without catching any upgrades the last, first day. But the first day was my best catch of 17 pounds, nine ounces. Um, and I did get my limit off of that first spot. But the next day, uh, I think I only had two off of that spot to begin with. And then the last day, I think, again, I think it was just two. So. Um, but from there, um, I'd go to another kind of a secondary spot, secondary point. Uh, 
it had some rock on it and I could um, catch some fish there. The first day I actually caught a nice, a good like four pounder there and then a couple of like two and a half, three pounders. And then, but then days two and three off of that at spot, just, you know, keepers and that's about all I could say, you know, no quality fish, but keepers nonetheless. Um, also tried some uh, fishing up in the bushes and the grass and had been too much. Um, I mean, small fish again. And uh, let's see, I, even on day two, I went to what I call Hog Hollow. And that's a, uh, that's where I lost my super big one in practice. And that was on day two. And, and lo and behold, um, I, I did see a, a really big one in there up shallow. And, but he just drifted off into the murk and disappeared never to be seen again. So, and I spent a lot of time in that area of the lake that second day without, I think I upgraded by a quarter pound and that's about it. You know, and, and showed up at the weighing with a couple of 14 and a half inches, um, just like the last day. A couple of 14 and a half, 15 inches, which is not going to get it done on Sam Rayburn Lake. So, all right, let's get into the uh, cubby here, show you some rods, show you some baits. And there's, there's going to be no rhyme or reason to how I pull these out, but every one of these rods was rigged up for a reason. Some worked, some didn't. All right. Um, this one, this worked. Okay. This here, it's the uh, all-terrain Smalley Smasher with a uh, little swim bait on there. That one, um, that caught me my biggest fish the first day of the tournament. That fish was like a four and a half pounder. That's all it caught was that one. And then it pretty much struck out on day two, struck out the rest of the day, day one. But then on day three, I caught a uh, two and a half pounder on that um, to start the morning. So. It was a small player, caught my biggest fish in the first day, so that's meaningful, that's something. But once the fish got a little finicky, they just shut down on all my moving baits, really. All right, so here's a uh, Nico Rig stickworm. And uh, there's a weight in the head of that. This played a uh, factor. Um, you know, I've got some, uh, I got the weed guards on there. I don't know if you can see them. That, uh, I played a factor, I'd throw that in the grass, I'd throw that in the bushes, I'd throw that on the rocks. I threw that in a lot of places, I put a lot of time in on it, and it caught some fish. So, got a lot of confidence in that, especially, and it's wacky rigged as you saw. When the fish come off the spawn and they're done spawning and they're just trying to transition over that's that's a good good tool now you get, I'm not going to change that for Gunnersville here that rod's going to stay as is all right next um, top water this is I like throwing I like throwing this bait just after the spawn it's a double prop bait and I picked this color because the fish were just kind of finicky. So I didn't want to give them too much to look at and they're pressured fish. I didn't want to give them too much to look at. So this kind of blends in more. And I seem to do better with direct bites on this one as compared to, like if I, put, if I took this exact same bait and threw a white one, it seems like they were slapping at that one more, bumping it and knocking it around and not, not uh, eating it. All right, so next, very interesting story on this, this setup, okay? This is a drop, sh drop shot, okay? That there is a, uh, just a straight tail worm. I actually bit it down, it's probably bit down about a half inch. 
and it's Texas rigged down there. It's a little crooked right now because it's just what happens sometimes. But you can see it's Texas rigged. The length of the leader you can see is maybe about seven inches, and that's a red bug color. Um, this was not tied on the first day of the tournament. I did not tie that one on. It was on the second day of the tournament when I decided to give this bay a try. And the reason for that was because the co-angler co that I was fishing with, his name's Eric, he was starting to catch, when the sun got up, he started catching fish behind me with this worm. So on a drop shot. So I never fished with him much the second day either or at all. But going into uh, the third day, I had this rigged up and set up. And uh, my five and a half pounder that I caught, I caught on this. And it seems like when that sun came out, that's when this was best. And I also lost one on this. I had, a, I had a nice one hooked up for about two seconds. Well, you know, I don't know how nice it was. It was a keeper. But it could have been a two pounder, it could have been a five pounder. Don't know, because I, I had two seconds with it and then it came unhooked. And my mistake, I think uh, with this spinning rod, having a Texas rig set up, and this spinning rod, uh, it's a medium light. A better rod would have been a medium, medium on that one, on this setup. Just so you can get a little more punch on that Texas rig. Punch that hook through the plastic. So that was a technical uh, error on my part. Okay, here's a, uh, this is just another, another uh, wacky hook. This I use for um, weightless Senkos uh, or Nico rigs. It's just another, I should have had my drop shot on this rod because this rod's a better, it's a little bit stiffer than what I had that punching power on that. Texas rig. Um, for, for the bushes, I did try some flipping. That's the L-Terrain uh, swim jig in 3 eighths or 5 sixteenths. And uh, I don't know, I didn't throw it enough. I had one, one on it the third day. I didn't throw it that much. Frog. Frogs were a player. Here's the frog I tied on. I wanted that light, lighter color, translucent kind of color on the bottom, just like my other top water. Black blue legs. Um, didn't throw it enough. Probably needed to throw this more instead of the, uh, instead of, why, I don't know. Man, I threw it in some heavy shaded pockets though, and you know, you get like a cypress tree in the bushes, puts a lot of shade out there, so I'd, I'd put down the wacky rig and I'd throw this in there, and in practice I had a couple hit it doing that. Um, but in the tournament, no, no players. Didn't weigh any fish on that, never caught, never hooked a fish, never had a bump on it. Didn't fish it a ton, but some. Threw it in some sweet looking spots. In fact, I threw it. In fact, I threw that frog in a spot where uh, there was a lay down log kind of back in a little nook. And uh, so I was done. I threw that frog in there a couple times. And I was done with it and started throwing it elsewhere ahead of the boat. My co-angler threw in there with his uh, soft plastic rig, caught a three pounder right where I just threw that frog. So. Anyways, here's another player. This is a, uh, like a, like a ringworm style worm. A little short curly tail on there. It's got a weight, weight in here. That, that was a player. Caught fish on that. Um, another all-terrain swim jig. I love this, love this setup right here. It's for a little bit more clear water. And uh, just didn't really throw it that much. So, no fish on it.
but had some action with it in practice, but not, I don't know, I felt like the worms was, was the way to go. Here's a bait that I threw some. It's just another prop bait. Shorter, fatter, same color as that other one. Same result. I didn't throw it a month. Didn't throw it a whole lot. See, the top water bite was good right away in the morning. I mean, really good. And uh, but I was, I was fishing that other point, that uh, more main lake style point. So I wasn't in the bushes or in the grass throwing top waters. But had I started in the grass, those that was, these propeller baits I was showing you would have worked because they worked every every time in practice. Um, so what do we got here? We got two rods that are intimately joined. That's what we got. So, anyways, this is annoying. This is what happens when you get, when you put like too many rods in your rod locker. <laughs> this is just a inevitable what's going to happen just give me a moment here to uh there we go so let's start with this here's another all-terrain swim jig and that's a white one um had i got around a shad spawn i would have been throwing this a lot but i barely threw this in the tournament and practiced it through it some and actually caught a nice four pounder on it and a couple others but Never came to throw much in the tournament. Here's a, I'm not even gonna show it. This is the crankbait that I never threw in the tournament. They didn't even throw it in practice. I, did, I rigged it up the night before the tournament and never threw it. But it was there, it was tied on in case if I felt like I needed a crank, a shallow crankbait. Ran about, it runs about four feet. Oh, this rod, key player. Key, key player, this rod, okay? This is a Texas rig. And this bait, I never, never tied on this bait until uh, until day one of the tournament. Never used it, okay? Or might have used it a few times sparingly, just practicing around in, uh, at other tournaments, but never used it at Rayburn. Very minimal use of it elsewhere but I promise you after what I've seen I'm going to be using this worm a lot more and that it is a Texas rig worm and here is that worm okay and it was this color now this worm and it's got just a little little spade tail this worm, um, it produced quality fish. Uh, it, it produced like four bites on the first day on my first spot. I already caught my two big ones, but it caught, uh, or no, my other big one came somewhere else. It, it caught, yeah, I caught my biggest one on that little swim bait. And then my second big one, biggest one off of that morning spot came in this along with all the other fish I weighed off of that, or I caught off of that spot. Like I said, I had five fish there, one on the swim bait. Um, let me backtrack. One on that Nico rig straight tail stick worm, and then three were on this, including my second biggest one. What I did learn about this worm was it was good, cloudy weather, this color. So I only have a couple of colors of, the, of this. Um, I really wish I had a... Uh, more of a just a clear watermelon this is kind of more of an opaque watermelon red and i wish i had like well red bug obviously i wish i had a red bug color in this or like a clear watermelon or even a green pumpkin blue flake something like that but with that lower light man this thing kicked ass and then on day two i caught uh my biggest one and yeah my two biggest ones there on this 
And then on the third day, the one I jumped off that I was telling you about earlier, that jumped off on this bait. So good. It was. It's. But it seemed to. It seemed to not do as well once the sun got high. But that again, it's only a matter of color. Had I had the right color in this worm, it would have worked. I think the red bud in that color would have been really sweet. So what else we got? Now we're getting now we're getting into this, the leftovers. So if you want to tune out now, <laughs> go, go ahead. Because I think all the exciting rods are spoken for. Horny toad. I did well on a horny toad here in an FLW tournament in post spawn conditions several years ago. So I had that ready to go. And I really thought I was going to throw it a lot, and I never did. Uh, here's some. Well, this is. Uh, Half ounce shatter bait, white. Okay, I had one of my practice days. I got into a lot of, lot of them. A good school of fish with this. And they were schooling, and the reason why, and the reason why I found that school, is because I saw way out from the bank, all, way out from where I was fishing, the shallow cover I was fishing. I saw like some minnows get chased. So I decided, well, I better go check that out. And I threw this out there and caught one right away, and then caught a couple more, all quality fish, like three, three and a half pounders. That school moved, couldn't relocate it. Um, I had this rigged up just in case I felt like I needed to do that. Let's say I, perhaps if I got on a mud line or something and wanted to throw that, that might have been the place to do that. But didn't really, didn't really get around those conditions. They were available on the couple of those days, but didn't really get around it. Here's another prop bait. This one's got bigger propellers, so I wanted to have this one ready to go in case if there was like a small chop in the area of fishing. Uh, another, another swim bait, a little bigger, a little heavier head. Zero fish. Uh, flipping stick with nothing tied on it. Sometimes I do that. Um, I just threw that rod in there with nothing on it, just thinking I'll just, you know, I'll just leave that one open and. If something comes to mind, I'll tie it on. Nothing came to mind. Uh, worthless buzz bait. <laughs> Why is it worthless? Because it, I didn't give it any chance at all to catch fish in practice or the tournament. Um, Texas rig punch bait. I wasn't around punching the habitat, punching type cover. And the biggest, the biggest letdown bait biggest disappointment day to, uh, in my career the old wake big old wake bait didn't do much was not triggering them that's that's my there you go that's everything out of my rod locker um, I left money on the table at Rayburn sad to say and uh, and I kind of left money on the table in that whole division, really. Uh, I mean, I was third in the angular of the year points in that division. And so had I done better at Rayburn, um, at Texoma when I jumped off that, would, would have been big bass in that tournament. It left definitely left money on the table there. Um, I would have been, ang I mean, that the angular of the year was mine. Had those, had those two fish not jumped off, the one at the third day at Rayburn and the one at Texoma. Had I demanded both of them fish, I would have been angler of the year. So, left money on the table. Anyhow, we got this term to get ready for. All these rods are gonna be reset up. Not all of them, I'll leave some of them as is, but some of these rods will get reset up. Anyways, thanks for watching, over.